Come in. Good evening, my dear. I came to say good night. Good night, Papa. Oh, is Roger back from Natchez? No. That... That's just my way of enjoying every minute of being Mrs. Roger Mowbray. <laughs> Hopelessly in love, aren't you? Hopelessly, Papa. And to think that four months ago I didn't even know he existed. Now every minute away from him is like a year. Why didn't Roger take you to Natchez with him? It was a business trip. Since we're moving to St. Louis, he wanted to wind up his affairs in Natchez. Dear Roger. Now I say you're not coming back, Roger. I'm not coming back. I have other plans. Other plans? Four months ago, we made plans together. What about those plans? Yes, well, they've been changed. Like that? Mr. Roger Mowbray has changed his plans so Miss Cassie Barrett can take her wedding dress and wear it to a hotel? Or if she doesn't feel like dancing, she could wad it up in dust with it. There's somebody else. Who is she? Please, Cassie. Please, Cassie. Is that all you have to say? There's somebody in Vicksburg. I can feel it in my bones. I should have been there. A man shouldn't be alone. I can make you forget her. Aren't you unloading any cargo here? Ah, nothing unloaded. We've been half empty all the way up from New Orleans. We pick up the cargo in Vicksburg. Business slack, huh? Well, we've been making expenses, but there's nothing left for cake. Try to get that fuel aboard, huh? We'll be shoving off in about an hour. You know, Gray, I might be able to throw something your way. Oh, really? Well, I'm right here to catch it. Antoine Rigo is opening up a branch in St. Louis. Does that mean anything to you? Well, yes, sir. I've been hoping to get his business for a long time. Well, there's a young friend of mine here in Natchez right now. As a matter of fact, we're going on to Vicksburg together. He's bought into the firm, full partner. Oh, partner. What's his name? Mowbray, Roger Mowbray. I'd like to meet that young man. Well, I expect he'll be up at Falling's. I'll introduce you. Well, in that case, Mrs. Falling's finest meal is on me. Ha, <laughs> 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 He didn't kick you right in the head. Uh, first he kicked out the back of my bar, now he kicked down the front door. Looks like he wanted to get out, doesn't it, huh? All right, Ebenezer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy now, That's it. Huh? Oh, you cantankerous old mule. Huh? <laughs> That's right, we're proud. I'm going to tie him up here in front of Falling. If you get any more bright ideas about taking revenge on the dumb animal, you think twice about it. Come on, Eb. Come on. I envy you and Roger Gray. You're young. The opportunities now for your young man are staggering. I think Roger here. With the country opening up the way it is, there's no limit to what he can do. Well, a partnership with Antoine Rigo is a pretty good start. That must cost you a pretty penny. Oh, money's no object to Roger. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Finish packing? Uh, just about, excuse me. Well, finish up. I'll see you aboard. Well, thanks, Jay, for a very excellent meal. Oh, not at all. I'm sure it'll be worth your while. Yeah, I hope so. Captain Holden, mm -hmm. is it true that Roger Mowbray's a partner with Antoine Rigo? Yeah, it looks that way, Cassie. Well, how can he be a partner with a rich man like that? Well, must have bought in. With what? Well, the usual legal tender is money. 
Now, if you want to know any more about Roger Mobile's business, you'll have to ask him. Me, I just run the boat. What's this about your being a partner with Antoine Rigo? I've been working for Antoine Rigo. Well, why did Gray Holden call you a partner? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm a junior partner. You and Antoine Rigo? How did a thing like that ever well, happen? I don't think it really matters now, do you? So that's it. You're going to be rich. I was good enough for you when you were poor, but now you want to get rid of me. What am I, Roger? Trash? You're just going to walk out on me? There's somebody else. There has to be somebody else. Well, would you keep your voice down? No, I won't keep my voice down. Now, you're not telling me everything. There's something you're keeping from me. What is it? Cassie. I guess I should have told you this before, but I didn't want to hurt you. And I want you to know I'm sorry. But I fell in love with somebody else, and we were married a month ago. How could that be? We're engaged. I know. I didn't know how to tell you. try to understand. It's all over between us. No, it isn't. It'll never be over between us. Cassie, I felt that way two months ago also, but I don't anymore. You see, everything has changed for me. You'll find somebody else also. I don't want anybody else. And don't you ever think that this is the end of us? Somebody? Yes, I, I want to say something to Roger Mowbray. Oh? It'd be quite a speech. I don't know what got into me, Captain Orban. But how can I face the people in Natchez after this? What can I say to them? He's left me, he's married somebody else, and he won't be coming back. <laughs> Cassie. <laughs> Next year, you won't remember the color of his eyes. Beautiful girl like you can get a million bows. Now, come on, I'll see you ashore. We're pulling out soon. How soon? Would I have time to pack? I have to leave Natchez. Please, could I have a cabin? Now, I don't want any trouble, Cassie. I won't be any trouble, I promise. I'll stay in my cabin and I'll leave there, too. Please, I have to leave Natchez. I'm that upset and ashamed I can't look anybody in the face. All right, hurry up. <laughs> You mean you didn't even offer Kathy the money? I couldn't do that. I couldn't bring myself to treat her like a woman of the streets. You're a fool. I told you to make it worth her while not to cause trouble. I couldn't hurt her in that way, Pa. It took me months to set this up, to gain Rigo's confidence. Every cent I had went into putting up a front for you. That house in Vicksburg, your clothes, your gambling debts with Rigo. That partnership alone cost me a fortune. You have a great start, Roger. And you have a rich wife. But the Rigos want no part of scandal. <laughs> you should have eased Cassie's aching heart with the present of cash. We're leaving Natchez and Cassie behind us. There'll be no scandal, Pa. Stop calling me Pa! I'm Jonathan Reed, and you're Roger Mowbray. Bear it in mind. Even in private, I'm not your Pa. <laughs> Ben, you want Vicksburg to think we're launching a full-scale attack? Stand by the forward line! Oh, why so gloomy, Papa? Hmm? No, it's, it's the Pompano. You're a fraud. You're upset because Roger and I are leaving. Please come to St. Louis with us. Well, why should I go to St. Louis with you? I'd only be in the way. 
now you're being pitiful. <laughs> Are you just a little bit jealous of Roger, Papa? Jealous? Why should I be jealous of Roger? Because it's your nature. You've been jealous of every young man who's ever paid court to me. Jealous, she says. Because I tried to protect you from every fortune hunter all the way from New Orleans to St. Louis. I introduced you to Roger myself. Oh, darling, Papa's creating a jealous scene. Deal with him. Are you jealous of my wife, sir? No, shield me from such untrammeled emotion. I was about to say I don't blame you. Roger, you have an enormous responsibility. There's $130,000 worth of merchandise in this cargo. There'll be no finer shop in St. Louis. Retail prices are marked down in the inventory. Even allowing for breakage, we should show a handsome profit. I'm certain you'll be quite pleased, sir. Well, Mr. Rigo, how are you? As well as may be expected, Gray. Mr. Rigo? Mrs. Mowbray, Captain Holden. Well, you really bought into the firm, didn't you? <laughs> well, congratulations. Am I permitted to kiss the bride? I hope you'll both be very happy. Thank you. Our finest cabin is center starboard. A wedding present, compliments of the Enterprise. See you, boys. Thank you very much. <laughs> you the best wife a man ever had. And if I do anything wrong out of ignorance or, or not understanding your ways, I want you to tell me straight out so that I can change it. All right? All right. Darling. I wouldn't change a thing about you. And if you want to please me, you won't try to either. I love your sweet face and your sweet ways. I love the way you sleep with your head under the pillow. <laughs> you know, when you first hear about someone, you form a, a kind of a picture in your mind about them. I'm afraid the picture I had of the heiress, Jeanette Rigo, wasn't a very pretty one. I thought that she'd be a coquette, hard, selfish, spoiled by her money. Beautiful, maybe. And then you came in that day. And you were so oh, gentle, so shy. So exactly different than I pictured you as being. Papa was right to protect me from being hurt. I know that now. But he shielded me from so much of the world. He made me afraid of men. Darling, I love you so very much. If anything should ever happen to you, I think I should die. Keep right on feeling that way for the rest of our lives. And we'll both be so very happy. Hello, Kathy. Having a nice trip? What's it to you? Seeing as we're both here on the boat, I thought... How's your wife, Jeb Grant? She traveling with you? No, she's to home. And your kids? They well? Looks like you take a powerful interest in a parcel of people you never met. Looks like you'd be real sure I didn't meet them, too. Now, nah, Cassie, don't be like that. I was just passing the time of daylight. Well, I'm passing it right back. And you can keep it. Any way you want. There's going to be too much talk around Natchez. Uh, darling, I want you uh, to meet Miss Cassie Baird, a friend of mine. This is my wife. How do you do, Miss Baird? I'm so happy to meet any friend of Roger's. Well, I don't feel so friendly, Mrs. Mowbray. I hear she's rich. Well, yes, I am rich. Very rich, I'm afraid. Well, why are you afraid? Money buys you everything you want, doesn't it? Cassie! Cassie what? I can see you haven't told her about me. Well, it's kind of surprising how you can keep a secret in Vicksburg that everybody in Natchez knows. Roger. 
What did she mean? Oh, Jeanette, it's all in the past. Please forget it. But I have to know. Why does everybody in Natchez know that's such a big secret? Please? What is that girl to you? I saw her some when I lived in Natchez. How much is some? Jeanette, it was before I met you. How much is some? You went to Natchez last week to see her, didn't you? Yes. To tell her that I was married to you. Come in. I, uh, I just thought we might have a drink in my cabin before dinner. Uh, yes, Roger. Why don't you have a drink with Mr. Reed? You're still upset. I don't want to leave. Oh, no, I'm fine. I, I have to dress anyway. Very well, darling. Hurry and dress. I'll uh, pick you up for dinner. shaken. I'm sure she'll get over it. It does matter. The success of our venture depends upon the success of your marriage. Boy, you make my marriage sound like a business proposition. It is, boy. Big business. And just what does that mean? It means you're on your way to being rich. Not little rich, boy. Big rich. We can't let anything stand in the way. We have to get rid of Kathy Baird before she causes any more damage. Oh, I can't do that, Pa. Son, do you think I'd do anything that wasn't for your good? Well, no. Of course not. I introduced you to Rigaud, didn't I? I got your partnership, didn't I? Pa, you make this sound as though we were scheming and dishonest. Oh, nothing of the sort, boy. Just a matter of figuring. I figured for years. I spent 20 years living like a mole, skimping, hoarding to get my stake. You know where it went? It went into setting you up in Vicksburg, in a house fit for a king, a wardrobe for you. I bought you a partnership that cost me a fortune. Now, don't you think you owe me something? I don't know what I owe you, Pa. I'll have to think about that. Now listen, don't you do anything until you talk to me. Don't go running off at the mouth with Jeanette. Sweet talker. Now, you stay out of this whole thing and let me handle it. You're not going to handle my marriage, and you're not going to lie about Cassie. Roger. Roger, I was wrong to say those things in front of your wife. You have a plan, haven't you? You married her for her money, didn't you? But you're coming back to me, I know it. Why didn't you tell me you were marrying her for her money? Because it isn't so. It has to be her money. Why couldn't you have just said so? Why couldn't you have just said, Cassie, it's you I love, but this is my big chance. We'll be together again. Cassie, it's not that way. I married Jeanette because I love her. You're lying. You lie through your teeth. Roger, your wife is looking for you. Honestly, Cassie, I'm not lying. Take your hands off me. I just want to talk to you, Miss Baird. What about? I think you'll be very interested in what I have to say. Then why don't you say it? You could seriously damage Roger's career. Now, you don't want to do that, do you? How would you like to mind your own business? It is my business. I'm an associate of Roger's. Miss Baird, I'm prepared to pay very well to mend your broken heart. Pay? Well, just what do you think I am? I am not as soft as Roger. And you're going to listen to reason? <coughs> Go to your cabin, Miss Baird. If I ever see you lift a hand against Cassie again, I'll throw you overboard. Gray, you don't understand. No, I don't. She was hysterical. I don't happen to think the best cure for hysteria is a slap in the face. This Baird girl is trying to break up Roger's marriage. That lies between Cassie, Roger Mowbray, and Roger's wife. It's none of my business, and I can't possibly see how it's any of yours. What do you expect that poor girl to do? She's been cast aside. She... Well... Couldn't you arrange it for her to leave the boat at the next landing? For Jeanette's sake. In the next few years, 
the Mowbray Rigo cargo will amount to a big fat sum for me, won't it? And to protect that, I'm supposed to do all sorts of little uh, favors. Is that it? Well, I'm not for sale, Mr. Reed. No, I cannot arrange that she leave the boat. Cassie paid her passage, and she's entitled to transport. Who is it? I want to talk to you. Talk away. I have to know what you and Roger meant to each other. I can stand knowing the truth, but I have to know it. Roger and me were going to be married, and that's the truth. And then he got this chance to work for your father, and... Roger's never worked for my father. He's independently wealthy. <laughs> Roger Mowbray hasn't got a sou. He comes from a sharecropping family six miles out of Natchez. And last week, he came back to Natchez. I didn't know he was engaged. He proposed to me, and I accepted. Well, that's the way girls get husbands. I accepted, too. But you had more to offer. But don't forget this. You didn't beat me on my own grounds or with my own weapons. You bought yourself a man I couldn't afford. And I'll get him back. Any way I can. your favorite wine for dinner. Thank you. Don't you feel well, darling? Yes, uh, I feel perfectly well. Would you mind leaving so I can dress for dinner? you were sitting on a keg of gunpowder? No, why? Not a very pleasant feeling. It's liable to go boom at any minute. Not many people in St. Louis, Jeff. Can't say it do. One or two I've run into when they come through Natchez. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I asked is, uh, I was wondering if you knew a fellow named Purcell, Harry Purcell? Well, he was in Natchez once in a while. Why did we have a time? <laughs> well, I mean, he kind of cottoned to me. You know, he thinks I'm real pretty. You are. You're just about one of the prettiest girls I ever did see. You know, he said to me once, he said, Cassie, you're beautiful. You're the most beautiful thing in the whole world. Honest, he said it. And he ain't the only one who ever said it, either. We'll never make Corey's Landing by morning. The barometer's dropping all the time. That means sticky weather ahead. It ain't enough to be pretty. Well, I mean, it'll get you part of what you want, but not all. You know what I mean. But now you take money. That'll buy you anything, whether you're pretty or not. May I have some more wine, please? Of course. <clears throat> you can be old and ugly as sin, but if you have money, you can buy anything. Even things that don't want to be bought, but can't help themselves. I've had enough. You're not you're taking leave of your senses. Quite the contrary, I have just regained them. Get her off this boat. But I wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting here and talking with Mr. Grant. That's right. We were just sitting here talking, not about anything in particular. Or do you want me to leave? Please, escort her out of the salon, please. Jeanette, I decide who stays and who leaves this boat. There's no reason why you both can't behave like ladies. Please inform the steward that from now on, I'll take my meals in my cabin. I breakfast at 10, lunch at 1.30, and dine at 9. 
Tell him he'll be well paid for his extra services. I can afford anything I want. Boom. You have to understand, things happen. Cassie just happened, I was poor. Don't be pitiful. Jeanette, I want our marriage. Oh, I don't blame you. Can't you understand I love you? I love you, Jeanette. Sorry I lost my head. I guess jealousy is human too, isn't it? Well, darling, there's nothing to be jealous of. Undo the top of my gown, will you, dear? Yes, of course. That girl must be mad making such crazy insinuations. Cassie's all right. She had quite a rough time of it. I've known her for whole oh, years. But she meant nothing to you. Well, perhaps at one time, but she doesn't now. Seems to have taken it quite seriously. Yes, Cassie has quite an imagination. You mean she lies? She doesn't tell the truth? Well, uh... Where did you get the money to buy in the firm, Roger? Sharecropping? Where did you get the money to live the way you did? That house and all those presents and gambling with father. Sharecropping must pay better than it did last year. Cassie's been here, hasn't she? No, I went to her. Where did you get the money, Roger? I borrowed it. From whom? Does it matter? I borrowed it. But you were going to let me pay it back, weren't you? No. Oh, you were going to let Father pay it back, not knowing it. No, I was going to pay it back out of the profits. Whose profits? My profits. I happen to be a partner. You're a cheap, lying swindler. Now, don't say that, Jeanette. Why shouldn't I say it? It's true. Jeanette, I have never told you one lie, and I have never touched a penny of your father's money or yours either. But you're a fraud. You're nothing you pretended to be. Yes, I did pretend and I did borrow, but there's no law against pretending and there's no law against borrowing. What a fool you must have thought me. No one has ever loved me for me alone. Just Jeanette, not the Rigo fortune. No man has ever just loved me. No one has ever thought of the other advantages of marrying me. What a fool you must have thought me, and what a fool I've been. Jeanette, I swear Don't to you... Don't give any more, Roger. You want money? You can have all the money you want when we get to St. Louis. Just name your price. But until then, remember this. That side of the cabin is yours, and this is mine. Please don't confuse them. Please be patient with me a little longer. I'm sure I can straighten all this out. I love you more than you'll ever know. It's like this. A man gets married young. And it gets so as every day is the same. The same face, the same questions, same arguments. You can see how it is. It gets monotonous. What about your wife, Jeff? Must get monotonous for her too, huh? Women are different. Who ever told you that? Well, I'm going to bed. Good night and thanks for the drink. Hey. <laughs> What do you mean, good night? Let go of me, Jeff. Uh, don't be silly. Don't be silly. Jeff, no. Jeff, stop! Jeff. Oh. Jeff, let go! What do you think you're doing? Did it ever occur to you that I have other things to do than referee your private fights? Come on, I want to talk to you. She led me on. She sweet-talked me all night, and then she bit me. Good! I hope she took a good big bite. If I had to choose between having you and River Pirates aboard, guess which one I'd take? She tore my dress. Sit down here. What are you trying to do? Wreck the Enterprise single-handed? First you almost shoot a man, and you try to break up his marriage. Now here you are, sweet-talking, a backwoodsman with three kids. 
What's the matter with you anyway, Cassie? What do you care? Well, I don't. If I didn't, you should. Why? Why? Because you have to live, that's why. Anybody ever tell you that tomorrow's another day? I suppose you think that's a treat. It'll be just like all the others. Oh, Cassie, Cassie. You're not the first woman that ever lost a man. I haven't lost Roger. He was crazy for me. And things are like that between two people. A man doesn't change. A man does change. Everything changes. The man is married. Can't you get that through your head? The marriage ceremony says forsaking all others. Now, doesn't that mean anything to you? It must have meant something to Roger. He wouldn't have said it. He still loves me. Now, you listen to me, young lady. You've got a choice of two ways to go. You keep on sweet-talking the Jeb Grants of this world, and another ten years, you look in the mirror, and you two girls won't be speaking. And let me tell you something else. They come lower than Jeb Grant. Now, if that's what you want, you keep right on going. I'm not your keeper. Captain Holden, it just seems that all my life I've been fighting. Fighting to get something, and then fighting to keep it. Roger Mowbray belongs to me by rights, and he knows it and feels it just like I do. He only married her for her money. 132,000. 140,000. I want to talk to you, Pa. I want to talk to you, too. Seems to me you're forgetting a few things, son. What things are those? For one thing, you're forgetting what you owe me as your father. You have a whole life ahead of you. I have it. I'm an old man and I'm tired. Every cent I ever had in my life is tied up in that cargo in the hold. And I want my money out of it. And I have a way to get it. What do you mean? Can't possibly clear enough from that cargo to pay Rigo and you too? Oh, yes, we can. Now, look here. I've been going over this, this inventory. Rigo's asking $20 for items that will bring 50. I've marked up everything that will take a price increase. We can easily get $20,000 more than Rigo expects. <laughs> I'll have my money. Rigo won't be hurt. And you'll have a partnership. You've planned this all along, haven't you? Crown, look at these figures. It's easy as falling off a log, and nobody the wiser. Yeah, nobody the wiser but me. Do you mean to stand there and tell me you're selling me out? I'm not selling you out, Pa. I'm holding you honest. I don't want any part of this. I'm beginning to see you in a new light. And you used to come up to visit me and Ma from New Orleans. I thought you were the most wonderful man that ever lived. And now I'm beginning to remember helping Ma carry buckets of swill to the hogs because they were too heavy for her. Work you should have been doing. Where were you, Pa? Where was I? I was getting a stake to set you up in business. I have a talent for seeing a chance and taking it. You have a talent for cheating, conniving, and lying. And it's not a talent, it's a disease. Oh, stop bubbling morality. Try to see reason, try to be fair. I'm trying to see reason, my kind of reason. I married Jeanette and I love her. She's entitled to the truth and I'm going to tell her the whole story. And they won't have to be living a lie. What about me? What about your father who only has a few more years? Well, it's all right for your father to get along the best way he can. Is that it? Will you owe me something, Roger? Why, because I was born? I have a right to live for a few years the way I've always dreamed of living. A right, do you hear me? You're thinking all wrong, Pa. We can live a good life and an honest life. I want to live the way I planned. You're going to listen to me like a son should. And we're going on with my plans. Just the way I made them, you understand? I put that gun away and calm down, Pa. I've made up my mind. You listen to me! Cassie, 
I want you to give my wife a message. I want you to tell her that I loved her. But up to the last, she needs to know. <coughs> and I need her to know. <laughs> Shot in the back. It's bleeding real bad. Don't you think that bullet ought to come out? No. No, with that bullet's lodged, we might bust something wide open. <laughs> the nearest doctor's at Corey's Landing. Tell Connie to get up a full head of steam. A full head of steam? That's right. Have you looked at the fog out there? You've been too busy. I'm feeling my way now. Yeah. The snags out there will come right through a belly. I can't even see them. I know, Ben. You'll have to smell your way through. Ray, it's one man's life against those of the other passengers. Don't you have some obligation to them, too? He's dying. They're not. Not yet. Ben, I can't make a daylight. I'll take the obligations. You take the orders. Yes, sir. Ben, that didn't come out the way I meant it to. I'm not ordering you to get up a full head of steam. I'm asking you to. And while you do it, say a prayer. I hope you understand. I understand, Gray. Would you rather see him dead than married to her? Is that it? Now give me that derringer, you little nitwit. Now don't you start yelling at me. I don't have a derringer. What was that I took out of your hand the day we sealed the matches? A wedding present? Now give it to me. I haven't got it. It belonged to Mrs. Falling and I left it at the tavern. Roger Mowbray was no contortions. He couldn't have shot himself in the back. Well, now why would I shoot him? I love him. I die for him. That's how much I love him. So why would I shoot him? A good many people have shot a good many other people just because they loved him so much. You know, for the last two days, you've done everything you could, except create a riot to get Roger Morby's attention. Shooting him is a little extreme, and if you haven't got it with that, I can assure you, you've got mine. Now give me that gun. I don't have it. What did you do, drop it overboard? I don't have it. I haven't even seen the you gun. Know, if you were a man, I'd search you. Well, go ahead and search me. Thank you very much. Now, look, Cassie, wait a minute. Listen to me. After you left me, you met Roger on the deck. He told you to stop fouling up his marriage. Now, isn't that just about the way it happened? He never said any such thing to me. Never in his whole life. He was just standing there and bleeding and looking at me. I swear it, Captain Holden. Ben, what is it? I knocked on Mrs. Mowbray's door. Yes? She just called out to me and told me to go away. I didn't feel like it was my duty to... Uh... Tell her. Yeah, well, I don't feel it's my duty to do it either, but somebody has to. All right, thanks very much. You stay right here in this cabin, my girl, and don't you leave it. Unless you jump overboard. Jeanette! Jeanette! It's Gray Holden. Please come back in the morning. This can't wait till morning. It's rather urgent. What is it? There's been an accident. Roger? He's been hurt. How? Where is he? What happened? He's been shot. He's topside in the pilot's cabin. I think you'd better come along. Is it bad? I'm afraid so. Come on. Gray, he didn't do it to himself, did he? No. Well, that's one thing we know. He didn't do it himself. Give me everything you got down there. Come on, get someone out of your heels. Captain Kent, watch his foot. How? I don't know. Will he live? I don't know. We're doing everything we can to get him to a doctor. I'll be in my cabin. Jeanette, what's the matter with you? We've quarreled, Gray. And you think that he's going to open up his eyes and pick up the quarrel where you left off? Where we left off was the end. 
Jeanette, you've been married, what, one month? You think your first quarrel is the end? Well, it isn't just the first quarrel, Gray. It's the thing that made the quarrel. Anything can make a quarrel, Jeanette. Anything at all. When two people who have promised each other so much arrive at the conclusion that this is the end, what they really mean is that they've lost the ability to understand, the ability to fight for what they want. That, that, that could be the end for Roger, Jeanette. Do you realize what a complete and total end that is? Gray, he married me for my money, not because he loves me. Did he tell you that? No. He says he loves me. Who did tell you that? Cassie Baird? Yes. Well, who are you going to believe? Did you promise to love, honor, and believe Cassie Baird? Don't you have the guts to fight for what you want? Or, or, or maybe you don't want him after all. Want him? Of course I want him. But only if he wants me. Well, then, don't you think you'd better find out? Since when did one of the Rigos yell uncle? Cassie Baird is the last one to see him conscious. She's in there now. Go to it. Oh, yeah, Cassie's tough. But I'll take odds on you. I could say you've caused a lot of trouble, but I'm not going to, because it suddenly occurs to me that I've been to blame. I've been suspicious and I've lacked faith. Cassie, I love my husband. I love him so much that life without him is worthless. Can you understand that? Sure, I can understand it. I love him the same way. If he lives, one of us has to lose him. You can't lose what you haven't got. Cassie, you were the last person to see him conscious. Did he say anything? Anything at all? Did he ask you to call me? Ha! Huh. What do you mean, ha? Huh? He must have said something, a name, something. He said a name. Whose name? He said Cassie. He wanted you to help him? No, he wanted to tell me something. All right, girl, out with it. What do you want to tell you? He said, Cassie, you're beautiful. You're the most beautiful thing in the whole world. I love you. I don't believe you. I've always loved you, just you. You're a liar, Cassie. Do you know why I know you're a liar? Because the last time I talked to him, he said, please be patient with me a little while longer. I think I can straighten this whole thing out. And then he said, I love you more than you'll ever know. A lot of people mean love. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What were his last words to you? I love you more than you'll ever know. No, 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 before that. Please be patient with me a little while longer. I, I think I can straighten this whole thing out. Straighten this whole thing out. That sounds like you wanted to see somebody straighten this something out with some... There's only one other person in this boat. The goblets now. Those are very rare indeed. Fifty dollars a piece is a mere pittance for a glass like this. Oh, dear. Now, where did I put that listing for the candelabra? Can I help you, sir? Huh. You came back, Roger. That's a good boy. I knew you would. I knew you couldn't leave your old father in the lurch. There's so much detail connected with this. Uh, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Uh, find the candelabra listing for me, son. The 14th century silver one. I think it's listed at $500. Oh, no, son, no. That's the goes listing. I want my own listing. <laughs> we can easily get 750 for it. That's 500 for you and Rigo and 250 for me. You see how easy it is. Yeah, I see how easy it is. It isn't as though it could hurt Rigo, Roger. He won't find out. <laughs> and I can live like a king. What if Rigo finds out? What happens then? Oh, he won't find out for years. The chances are he'll never find out. Oh, you shouldn't have torn up these listings, son. Well, now I'll have to do them all over again. But I'm glad you came around to my way of thinking. For a minute there, I was afraid all my dreams all my plans of years were never going to come true. Make your lists all over again, old man. Everybody's entitled to their dreams. 
What did you do with the Derringer? 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 Well, didn't you take it away from me, son? I seem to recollect, after it went off, you taking it away from me. Didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's just about the way it happened. Corey's landing ahead! Asking for you, Mrs. Mowbray. How is he, Doctor? Oh, uh, it's a nasty wound. Another millimeter to the left, and but he's got a chance. I'll get your coat, Doctor. Come on. Oh, oh Jeanette, there's something that I have to tell you. You're not to talk, Roger. There's nothing you have to tell me. I know all about it. You are not to talk. Let me do the talking for both of us. I love you more than I can say. Getting off here, I guess I, uh, I have a sister that lives in Corey's Landing. Will you tell him? Will you tell him goodbye for me? Of course I will, Cassie. Most likely I'll be picking you up again on your way upstream. I sure do want to see St. Louis. Good luck, Cassie. Oh, I'm sorry insisting about that derringer. And that was very nice of you, not to get angry when I threatened to search you. Well, you wanted to find a gun. You thought I had a gun. I just wanted you to know that I didn't. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> good straight thinking, Cassie. You keep right on being bone honest. And as for you ever being searched for a gun again, well, I doubt whether that'll ever happen. I won't make book on it. <laughs> 